When I found out that there were tortillas available at my local grocery store, which had between four and six net carbs per tortilla, I was ecstatic. Suddenly, tacos, quesadillas, and breakfast tortillas filled with eggs and sausage were back on the menu. But is it too good to be true? We'll test them today and find out. For some reason, low-carb bread is hard to find at local grocery stores. Sure, you can order it online, but you may end up paying $10 to $12 per loaf. But low-carb tortillas are another story. You can find them at almost any grocery store, and there are several brands available. Now, these tortillas are not really low-carb if you look at the total carbs, but what makes the low-carb tortillas low-carb is that the companies that make them have really ratcheted up the fiber. And since you can deduct the fiber and the fiber carbs from the total carbs, you end up with low numbers for the net carbs. In this case, I have here tortillas made by the Olay Company, and they're called Extreme Wellness High Fiber Carb Lean Tortillas. That's quite a handle. According to the nutrition information, each tortilla has 15 grams of carbs, which is on the high side, but out of those 15 grams, 11 grams are fiber carbs. And that means that, theoretically at least, there should only be 4 grams of carbs in each tortilla to affect our blood sugar. Now, there are a couple of reasons I wanted to do this experiment today. One reason is some of you have left comments and told me that low-carb tortillas just don't work for you, and they still raise your blood sugar significantly. And as I always say, trust Mike, your blood sugar meter, more than you do the nutrition info that's on the package of your foods. And the other reason I wanted to test these is that quite a while back, I had some meal, I can't remember exactly what it was, but I ate two low-carb tortillas and for some strange reason, I randomly tested my blood sugar three hours later, or a little over three hours, my glucose was elevated way too high. I think it was something like around 175 or 180. The only thing I could think of that would have caused that was the low-carb tortilla shells I had eaten over three hours before. Since then, when I make a pizza using a tortilla shell base, I use only one low-carb tortilla shell. Before that, I would often use two shells bonded together with a layer of cheese in the center. Now, was that high reading a fluke? Can we reproduce it here? <laughs> well, we'll find out. For today's test, I'm going to have two tortilla shells with nothing whatever on them. No meat, no cheese, no spaghetti sauce, just two scrawny tortilla shells by themselves. Doesn't sound very appetizing, does it? In fact, I invited Benedicta to join me in this test, and the idea of eating two of these shells by themselves was too unappealing for her, so she declined. But by having these shells by themselves with no fat, no protein to affect the test, and only water to go with it, we should see these tortillas at their absolute worst. The glucose spike I get by eating them alone should be about as bad as they're capable of creating. And since that one test I did that had such a high number occurred over three hours later, I'm going to do a one-hour post-test, two-hour post-test, and a three-hour post-test just to see if there's a delayed effect. If I can get good numbers after eating these tortillas at one, two, and three hours after eating, they should be safe, at least for me. You'll have to test yourself to see how your body responds to them. Again, with four net grams of carbs each and a total of eight grams for the whole meal, if you want to call it a meal, theoretically, I should be able to handle those eight grams without much trouble. But one thing I've learned is to allow Mike the meter to have the final say on what I can and cannot eat and to trust him far more than nutrition info or fancy books written by celebrity doctors or just opinionated people. Each time I test myself in these three post-meal tests, I'll do it on camera so you'll get to know as soon as I do what these low-carb tortillas have done to my glucose levels. So if you'll excuse me, I have my rather unappetizing lunch of two tortilla shells, and then I'll be back with a one-hour test.
Okay, we are nearly at the one hour test. I'm waiting for my timer to go off. I've actually got two going on here, but this is probably the more accurate one. So I will go ahead and, uh, well, it's about to go off. Bam. And I'll go ahead and set that for another hour and get that started. And set this for an hour. Just to make sure. And let's see what has happened at one hour. There we go. And you're going to find out just as soon as I do where we stand with the two tortilla shells. Okay, well that says 113, not too bad. That, as I've said before, one hour is when I normally peak, but with these tortilla shells, you can't be too sure. So, so far, so good. I'll come back at two hours. Let me get a picture of this. And, uh, so I'll be back at two hours, another hour from now, and we'll see where we stand there. Okay, well, our time is almost up. We got three, two, one, and we are ready to test. Set it for one more hour. And let's see, about two hours. I really do believe that this two-hour test is going to really tell the story. If it hasn't risen much at two hours, I doubt it'll rise much by the third hour, but who knows? We'll find out. I've learned that you can always be surprised by these tests. No matter how many you do, you can always be surprised. So what surprise will we have here? Not much. Uh, a 111. So 111 is uh, great. Uh, I'll let you know what I where I started uh, when I finally wrap up. But we had a 113 at one hour, 111 at two hours. Come back in an hour and we'll see what we get at three hours. And the timer is telling us that it is time for our third post meal test. This one is at three hours. So I don't normally test at three hours. My peak is usually long past by three hours. I normally will peak around one hour for most meals and sometimes an hour and a half, uh, rarely two hours, but uh, just wanted to see what would happen here with a three-hour test, especially given that I had that one issue. Didn't get much blood this time, but I think it'll be enough. There we go. Got enough blood. Gotta have blood. Okay, well, at three hours, it is a 101. So, uh, we had a 113, 111, 101. These two tortilla shells have uh, passed the test with flying colors, uh, straight A's I would give them. And if we added more fat and things like cheese and so forth, probably wouldn't even have gotten the rise that uh, I did. Uh, so I'll come back with a few concluding thoughts in a few minutes. So this tortilla test was good news. True confession, though, I did start eating those tortillas without first testing myself. But after sharing in that opening segment and then eating the tortillas, I was putting the video and the audio together on my computer and then I remembered I hadn't done a pretest. So I quickly tested myself, figuring that the tortillas probably hadn't made much of an impact yet. Amazingly, my test showed an 88, which for me is great. Actually, I woke up this morning with an 87 fasting glucose, so apparently my blood sugar had remained pretty steady throughout the morning. Now, I didn't eat breakfast, I just had bulletproof coffee, so that should not have affected my blood sugar much. Anyway, to recap the test, after eating the two low-carb tortillas with 4 net grams of carbs each, a total of 8 net grams of carbs, my glucose rose from the 88 to 113 at 1 hour. By two hours, it was down to 111, and then at three hours, it was down to 101 as it made its way back down to the baseline level. Now, this was a good, good thing for me. Yes, there was a blood sugar rise, but not that much of one. Anytime my blood sugar peaks in the one teens, I'm satisfied. In fact, I'm more than satisfied. I'm a happy guy. 
And I'm happy to learn that this brand of low-carb tortillas, this Olay Extreme Wellness Tortillas, works for me. There's so much you can do with these tortillas. You can put a little butter on them and eat them as part of your dinner. You can put scrambled eggs and sausage in one of them and have it for breakfast. As a breakfast burrito, you can use them to make soft shell tacos and you can use a couple of them and make yourself a chicken quesadilla. And of course, there's the ever, ever popular pizza on tortilla shell, which everybody seems to love. And I'm sure some of you can think of a lot of other creative uses. So why did my glucose rise so high that other time I mentioned when it jumped up to 185? Uh, it's been probably a couple of years ago or a year and a half. I guess it had to do with the brand of tortillas I used at that time. As I recall, it was a generic store version, and the truth is you cannot simply trust nutrition information you see on the package of foods. You need to test yourself and make sure various foods and various brands of foods are safe for you. And this may be the reason some of you have mentioned that low-carb tortillas still raise your blood sugar way too high. Or some of you say, well, the net carb thing just doesn't work for me. It may be you just need to try a different brand and see if that works better for you. Once you do find a brand that works for you, like the Olay brand works for me, stick with it. For me, this brand is Mike approved. Mike, the blood sugar meter, has informed me that these tortillas are just fine. Keep in mind that if you discount the net carbs concept, those two tortillas would have a total of 30 grams of carbs. And that many carbs should have sent my blood sugar much higher than a peak of 113. 30 grams of carbs eaten in a food that was just about all carbs should have given me a spike of 160, 170. Instead, I only rose to 113. And that means that the net carbs phenomenon was functioning just as it is supposed to function. The fiber carbs were not affecting my blood sugar, which is just the way the net carbs concept said would be the case. Okay, that'll do it for now. If you found this video helpful, be sure and give it a thumbs up so YouTube will recognize its worth and promote it to other diabetics desperately seeking answers. And consider subscribing to this channel and then click that bell icon so you'll be notified every time we post a new video. God bless. See you again soon.